welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana, and we're here today with special guest, Jessica Buchanan, who's here to share with us her new book, Deserts to Mountaintops, Our Collective Journey to Reclaiming Our Voice. So Deserts to Mountaintops is an anthology of 22 women's voices and their unique journey from the desert of self-abandonment to the mountaintop of self-love. The inspiration for this collection of essays stems from the lead author, Jessica Buchanan's own self-abandonment experience in 2011. Even though her intuition was screaming for her not to go on a project mission for a nonprofit in southern Somalia, she ignored it and went anyway. This decision almost ended Jessica's life. She was kidnapped and held for 93 days, living in the deserts of Somalia at the hands of land pirates who held her hostage for a $45 million ransom. She was starved, beaten, and abused until the order of President Obama and SEAL Team 6 parachuted into the desert on a moonless night, rescuing her. So let's welcome to the show, Jessica Buchanan. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You know, what a great honor it is to have you here and to talk about your new book. I mean, there's so much in this book. I, My goodness, it's such a great book. Why don't you share with our listeners what inspired you to write this? Sure. So my backstory is a little unusual. Um, it's it's wild, but it's not necessarily unique, I have found, as I've been telling it for years. Um, I'm actually a teacher by profession and uh, about... Uh, 14 years ago, I found myself working in East Africa at an international school where I met my husband, who's a native Swede, and we found love and got married. And I did what all newlywed wives do. I moved to Somalia with him where he was working. Um, And so I ended up working for an NGO, a nonprofit, uh, using my education degree and to to work in mine risk education and armed violence reduction. And so while uh, in October of 2011, I was on a routine field mission with the organization. And I had a like a gut feeling, right, that something wasn't right, something was off. I didn't want to go on this trip, but I ignored uh, my intuition. I ignored my inner truth and silenced my voice and um, went ahead anyway. And on October 25th, 2011, when I was en route back to the guest house, my colleague and I were apprehended at gunpoint. Uh, our car was taken over. We were driven out into the desert for hours. Uh, marched out into it, forced to participate in a mock execution. And then subsequently we were held for 93 days as hostages uh, by Somali pirates for a $45 million ransom demand. Um, We were kept on a starvation diet. We were held outside, uh, never taken to a shelter or even given a tent or anything. We were terrorized, beaten, um, all of the things until we were successfully rescued on January 25th, 2012, uh, by order of President Obama, by the nation's, the U.S. Uh, military's most elite SEAL Team 6, the same group that rid the world of Osama bin Laden. So uh, that is the backstory. And and my husband and I co-authored a book, Impossible Odds, The Kidnapping of Jessica Buchanan and Her Dramatic Rescue by SEAL Team 6. And that came out in 2013. But what I have found uh, in the decades since that book came out is I've been really uh, on an, an, another journey, another survival journey. I, I made it through that traumatic experience. Uh, and then I had to figure out how I was going to rescue myself and how things were going to be different for me this time. And what I've uncovered in myself is that uh, I think largely through my own uh, upbringing and culture and society as a woman, especially, um, I have been taught to silence my intuition and and my voice. And um, so I really felt compelled to start writing about that. Um, And as I was crafting my next memoir, I realized, yeah, I don't think the world needs another memoir by Jessica Buchanan, but what it does need is uh, women's stories of how they have figured out how to survive and reclaim their voice. And so that is what Deserts to Mountaintops is. It is uh, our collective journey to reclaiming our voice. It's an anthology, 22 chapters, 25 women's stories of how they've journeyed out of their own desert to mountaintop experience. 
Well, thank God for SEAL Team 6 and yes. all of our men and women who serve. I mean, my goodness, what what a just tremendous story. And that must have been just so, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what that would have been like. It's surreal. I still think that one of the reasons I tell the story so often is uh, not necessarily because I emotionally or mentally want to go back to that place, but it is a baseline, right, for um, several truths that I carry with me in my life now. And and one of those is that, man, I am literally like the luckiest girl alive. Well, we're so glad you're here. And this book is such a profound book, especially when we talk about women and their voices. I mean, how often do we, you know, we know we're not supposed to do any, you know, something. You just don't get that gut feeling like, gosh, we're not supposed to do this. And we go, well, I'm going to go do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And, and things happen. When you were getting these great stories together for your book, how did you identify which ones you wanted to have in the book? I think a lot of it just came down to a feeling of alignment. Um, I, I am very, my imprint, my publishing imprint is called Soul Speak Press. And it is very much about being soul centered and connecting with yourself and your essence. And so I was looking for women who had uh, gotten to the other side, you know, our mountaintops all look different. And that doesn't have to be like some massive success per se, but it has to um incorporate lessons learned. And, and, and I'm looking, I was looking for women who had been through something and now they knew something and now they were ready to teach us something. And so that was, um, the call that I put out. And I think every single woman who participated, I feel like met that, um, met those protocols. Do you have one story? I know it'd be like picking a favorite child no. here, but do you, <laughs> do you have one story that you could share with us? Oh goodness. Uh, there are so many and they're so beautiful and they're so brilliant. Um, one that I would particularly highlight right now, uh, was written by Lana Whiting and she, um, talks that her chapter is titled dining at the dementia cafe and her experience in caring for her mother who received an early, um, onset Alzheimer's diagnosis about 10 years ago. And what that desert to mountaintop experience has been like caring for her mother and journeying, um, with her as she has continued to deteriorate. She's still living, um, but is nonverbal and, and, and not moving. And, um, all of the lessons that Lana has learned as she took on the role of becoming her mother's voice, she lost hers. And so reconciling, um, just this really traumatic, awful illness, and how it has taken over her mother and their relationship and all of the things, you know, that they enjoyed together and how she's um, managed to get to the mountaintop of reclaiming her voice in the process um, is really insightful. She's a beautiful writer. um, And I think it's a message that we need more of in the world. When you're going through your own journey, that, that horrible journey you went through the 93 days, what do you feel for you personally that you walked away with that impacted you personally on that, that improved your life? Oh, I met myself out there. You know, I don't think that, uh, and while I would say I've had other traumatic experiences that in my lifetime prior to this, the kidnapping, um, there was an opportunity in the midst of those 93 days where I was just out there uh, in the desert and And it was more than a physical desert. It was emotional. It was spiritual. It was mental. And I was, I could languish or I could uh, make it a time of productivity. And I like to say that I'm an annoyingly productive person and um, I didn't want it to necessarily go to waste. And I think, you know, metaphorically, I feel like I met myself in the truest essence of who I am while I was out there. And it has taken me a long time to articulate that and unpack that, but I I wouldn't want to go back and relive it, but I do appreciate who I am now in uh, the aftermath and what I know about myself now. It seems that women constantly have to prove their worth, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and these experiences, they are so heartfelt and they share so much of personal pain and, and overcome it it's interesting just how much we still have to prove our worth. It 
is heartbreaking. Um, and I am on a mission to use my voice uh, and <laughs> shout it from the mountaintop uh, that we we are just worthy because we are. We don't have to work so hard. We don't have to compete. We don't have to uh, languish in, in self-doubt. We are worthy because we're here. And if we could let go of trying to prove ourselves and work so hard to prove ourselves. Um, I think that we would have space and energy and time uh, to rest and recover and to really connect with our purpose and why we're, why we are here. How do you think the impact of us, you know, as women, we come together and, and develop this, this connection to ourselves as self-love, we kind of reclaiming our voices how that really impacts not just us, but the other generations that come. Oh, for sure. I mean, we have to model it, right? Like we can't just talk about it. We can't just preach about it. We can't just write about it. We have to embody it. We have to do it day in and day out for our sisters, for our daughters. You know, I, when I get up in the morning and I do the things that I do in my day for my work and, 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 promoting this book and all of, all of it, I think about my eight-year-old daughter and how I hope, um, I know she's going to have her own battles and she's going to have her own journey. And, and none of it's easy because none of us escapes the human experience unscathed, but, um, I'm hoping that she will be a little bit more sure-footed Um, than I was and that she will be able to then pass that on if she chooses to have children and to her daughters and to her friends. And um, a a good example of that would be, she came up to me the other day and she has a, like a, a strawberry mark right on the middle of her forehead. When she was born, she had all these angel kiss strawberry marks all over her uh, face and they were very prominent. And I was you know, worried that she would feel um, othered because of these marks on her face. And she came up to me the other day and said, can you see my strawberry mark? And I said, oh, well, no, not really. I can't, you know, I was being truthful. I can see it a little bit, but not, not too, too much right now. And she's like, oh, shoot. And I said, why? And she goes, you know, I really like it when it stands out because it makes me different. It makes me unique. And I thought, well, that's a change right? Like that, that is not what I was expecting. So I feel like as we model and accepting all sides of who we are, whether it's on the outside or the inside and and the experiences that we've had, they, they pick up on that and they're going to keep getting stronger and more uh, self-assured along the way. You have to be a proud mama after hearing that, you know, I did feel good. (laughs) I thought it did feel good. It just was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. This is why we, this is why we love ourselves, right? So that they can see that it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It it teaches so many other people. And I think just the book itself, for me, it, it allows people and, and myself to know it's like, okay, I'm not the only one going through hardship and challenges. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got their mountain to climb. I'm just, my mountain might be different, you know? (laughs) 100%. And I think that that was, you know, a huge part of putting this anthology together to get other women's voices on board. Um, I find sometimes my experience is it's so out there that it kind of makes it hard for me to connect um, or other women to connect with me. And um, my goal is to find that through line, you know, like we are all struggling to love ourselves. We are all struggling to reclaim our voice. Um, and, uh, you know, we have um, one author who writes about, you know, she was literally at the altar about ready to marry her boyfriend and realized she was in love with her. The love of her life was a woman. And so she, you know, she, she left, she stayed true to herself. She, you know, blew up the house Um, so that she could rebuild a life that she was meant to live and is extraordinarily happy now. And, you know, all of the different um, things that we go through. um, And some of us, I think, feel compelled and called to heal in public so that those who are healing in private know that it's possible. Well, we definitely need more people in the world like you, Jessica. Where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about Deserts to Mountaintops, our collective journey to reclaiming our voice, and your other book, Impossible Odds, 
the kidnapping of Jessica Buchanan and her dramatic rescue by SEAL Team 6, where can our listeners learn more about you? Um, you can always find out more about me at either of my websites, uh, jessbuchanan.com or desertstomountaintops.com. And then I hang out on Instagram way too much. I'm Jessica C. Buchanan. And then I have been entering, uh, dipping my toe into the TikTok world. It's Jessica C. Buchanan as well. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, Jessica. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your book, Deserts to Mountaintops, our collective journey to reclaiming our voice and your memoir, Impossible Odds, the kidnapping of Jessica Buchanan and her dramatic rescue by SEAL Team 6. Both books are available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And remember, if it's not on the shelf, just ask for them to order it. And please support our indie bookstores. They really need our support. Make sure to visit Jessica Buchanan's website at jessbuchanan.com. That's J-E-S-S-B-U-C-H-A-N-A-N.com. We would like to thank our Navy SEAL heroes and SEAL Team 6. Make sure to support the Navy SEAL Foundation by visiting NavySEALFoundation.org. The mission of the Navy SEAL Foundation is to provide critical support for warriors, veterans, and families of Naval Special Warfare. Visit NavySEALFoundation.org to learn how you can donate. On that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break, and we'll be hearing a word from our sponsors that make this show possible. Please make sure to visit their websites and learn more about them. We'll be right back after these messages. Are you a coffee lover who wants to make a difference? Look no further than Fire Department Coffee, a veteran-owned business that gives back to support first responders in need. Each batch of coffee is freshly roasted right here in the USA by a dedicated team of first responders and coffee experts. So when you enjoy a cup of Fire Department coffee, you're not only drinking high-quality coffee, you're supporting members of your community. Start your day with a coffee that gives back. Visit FireDepartmentCoffee.com. That's Fire, D-E-P-T, Coffee.com. Are you looking to untangle life's riddles? Discover the profound teachings of Dr. Shai Tabali, renowned philosopher, best-selling author, and your guide to self-empowerment. With methods that harmonize psychological and spiritual principles, Dr. Tabali's wisdom offers a pathway to holistic transformation. Take that first step today and join thousands globally and embrace the journey to higher consciousness. Visit shytabali.com. That's S-H-A-I-T-U-B-A-L-I.com now. Hello, Dr. Cutler here. Do you experience bloating, heartburn, food craving, bowel irregularity, food sensitivities, weight issues? If you do not digest your food, you may be deficient in macronutrients, which your body needs for optimal health. Dr. Ellen Cutler.com teaches that this is an enzyme deficiency. I believe the most important supplement is a full spectrum digestive enzyme, Dr. Ellen's Way Digestive Enzymes. Hear more about it at Dr. Ellen Cutler.com. Are you chasing profitability yet losing fulfillment? Let me introduce you to your solution, The Relaunch Company. I'm Hillary DeCesar, an entrepreneurial performance coach, fearless leader of The Relaunch Company, here to help put the pedal to the metal and relaunch your business your way. Visit www.therelaunch.com. Take the free quiz to learn three steps towards waving goodbye to burnout and hello to success. The book Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, authored by Danny Carroll, is on sale at Amazon now. Licensed psychologist and psychotherapist Tessa Antia John Guerra commented, This is one of the most empowering books on a topic of cancer you will ever read. Award-winning author T.L. Needham commented, This recommended book can be understood by anyone seeking answers, hope, and alternatives to a terminal diagnosis. Buy it now on Amazon.com. Are you feeling disconnected from your life and your body as a woman? 
Do you feel numb emotionally and or sexually and just not sure how to feel really alive again or maybe for the first time? Are you struggling with body and self-acceptance, especially during menopause? If you'd like to reclaim your feminine and learn more about women and gynecology and how it can help empower your life, contact Gina Cloud at www.ginacloud.com. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.